Uh, Jane and Tony's daughter Lauren is here. Hello, Lauren. Hi. Thanks for coming on the program. And also Clive Coleman, our legal affairs expert, is here too. I think before we talk about what's happened today in a European court, let's just remind our audience what the law says in this country about assisted okay. suicide. Well, in this country at the moment, um, in England and Wales, Scotland is slightly different. In England and Wales, uh, you and I could end our lives at a time of our choosing. Suicide is not a crime. But assisting someone to commit suicide, uh, encouraging them or assisting them to do so, is a crime. It's a serious crime. It carries a maximum sentence of 14 years imprisonment. Uh, now, uh, Tony Nicholson, when he was alive, uh, Jane Nicholson uh, and Paul Lamb have challenged that law on the basis that it infringes their right to private and family life under Article 8 of the Human Rights Act. That, that's what's at the, at the heart of this case. Um, now, uh, last year, the Supreme Court had a look at this, and it was a nine-judge Supreme Court, which indicates the importance of this as an issue. But what the court decided was that, A, it did have the right to say that that law, that law uh, on assisted suicide, uh, is in, incompatible with Article 8. But it declined to make what's called a declaration of incompatibility. And what it did is it said, look, this, these are moral issues. These are issues, very sensitive issues of social policy. So it really is Parliament that should decide on those rather than the courts. So it batted it back to batted, Parliament. Batted it back yeah. to Parliament, and that's what the Nicholson family were challenging, along with Paul Lamb at the European Court of Human Rights. Okay. And so what has happened this morning in the European Court well, of Human Rights? Well, uh, th they've, they've had a reverse. What's happened is that the uh, European Court of Human Rights has said effectively the Supreme Court did nothing wrong. They were perfectly entitled to say that, look, this is best dealt with uh, by Parliament. So um, both of the applications have been declared inadmissible. Okay. Uh, Lauren Nicholson, hello. How do you react to the ruling this morning then? I think we were devastated. I think when we, you know, when we took on the legal, the legal case five years ago, we always knew that there would be an end point. I don't think we quite ever wanted there to be an end point. Um, not only is this such an important issue, it's one that's so personal to us. It's, I guess for us it's a little way of keeping, or for me anyway, a little way of keeping Dad alive. Um, I'm really, really gutted. Mm. And, and this is the end, is it now? There's, there's nowhere left to go? Potentially. We need to consult with our legal team to confirm mm. that. But I think ultimately what it means is people will continue to go to Switzerland. We will continue to export the problem. People will continue to orchestrate their own suicides in painful, potentially unsuccessful manners. People will continue to live cruel, miserable lives. People will continue to suffer. We need people to continue to challenge the courts. They need to come forward. They need to do what we did to show Parliament, show the courts, show the policy makers that this is an issue that won't go away just because our case has ended. People need to come back and do more and do what we did. Mm. It, it has to change at some point. I really believe that, and I believe it will. And you know, I mean, you know more than most, but it was clear when I spoke to your dad those, all those years ago, he was absolutely adamant that he wanted his mm -hmm. life to end. Yeah. He had no quality, and you and your sister and your mum had come to terms with yeah. that, you accepted yeah. that, um, but he couldn't take his own life for obvious reasons, and that would have put you and your mother potentially in, you know, facing prosecution mm -hmm. if you'd helped him. Yeah. Well, it was, it's, it was horrible. It was, it was a horrible situation to be in, to see, you know, my dad, someone that I loved, love so much, suffer every single day and be unable to do anything about it. Um, he wouldn't have ever let us help because of the risk of prosecution. He wouldn't have put us through that. And then when he became ill, he refused medical treatment. And, you know, some might say he got what he wanted in the end, but not in the fair, painless way that he should have. He died of pneumonia. He drowned in his own phlegm. It was horrible. Why should someone have to go through that when there could be a way to avoid it? Mm. Why should someone have to die so painfully when there could be a way around it? And actually it your, your, mind. your case is slightly different to other campaigners who, who want to change the law because what you were trying to persuade uh, politicians and the courts mm. about was that actually in cases like your father's where he couldn't take his own life, you wanted uh, cases to be judged on a, a on merit, if you like, on a case-by-case -case basis, not, not a, 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 
a, a national change yeah. in the law. Absolutely. We were never campaigning for a blanket change mm. in anything. We were never campaigning for anything that would put people at risk. There would have been incredibly strong safeguards in place. There would have been so many caveats to, to what, what it is we were looking for. You couldn't just go to your GP, ask for a syringe of morphine and toddle on off on your way. It was never that. And people who suggest that, scaremonger, and they're wrong, quite frankly, they are blatantly wrong. That's not what we wanted. Mm. We wanted there to be a safe way for someone like my dad who was adamant in his wish to end his life at home where he was safe, where he was warm with the people that he loved and died peacefully and pain free. But this country refuses to even acknowledge, or I believe acknowledge it, let alone think about debating it in Parliament and and all the European courts are like, is bat it back to Parliament. Mm. Um, I know there's a lot going through being led by Lord Falkland and Dignity and dying for the terminally ill, which is brilliant and we you know, we are very vocal in our support for that, but it's not enough. It needs to go further. That won't help people like my dad and Paul Lamb mm. because they're not terminal. And with these safeguards, with this system, with this process in place, it should be possible. We just need to be a little braver. I was just going to say, there is, you know, there is, uh, of course, everyone has enormous empathy, sympathy for the people in, in your position. Mm. Of course, the counter-argument is that any change in the law will make the elderly, those with dementia, vulnerable they, if they feel that they're a burden on their relatives and that, you know, that they may, through, you know, thinking that they'll just remove a problem. Yeah. Um, that's not what you were campaigning for, but that, that's the stuff that, that Lord yeah. Faulkner is reintroducing. Well, well that's, that's, that's a concern that I think many people have about any change in the right. law that allows yeah. assisted dying. Yeah. But let me say this uh, to Lauren, that there is a chink of light, I think, um, in that if you look at the Supreme Court judgment from last year, all of the judges okay, wrote a detailed judgment. They were all very, very engaged and concerned yeah. about this issue. Uh, and you know, many people interpreted that judgment as saying, look, Parliament, over to you. But if you don't deal with it, we have the power to deal with it. So if another case comes in five years, ten years, uh, then they could declare the law to be incompatible with Article 8. And that would really force Parliament's hand to do something. So, you know, uh, this isn't over. And you know, many people feel that it's right that periodically our most senior courts and Parliament must look at this, these issues. These are some of the most profound issues that we face. Mm. Um, there's a case in one of the newspapers today um, which suggests that two daughters are raising money for their mum to be able to go to Switzerland. Now, I haven't spoken to the family. I don't know if it's, they've confirmed that mm. story. But those, uh, you know, this, this, is, this is an issue for people right now, isn't it? Absolutely. I've not seen the story myself, but if you sort of, you know, if we go with it as that, people are fundraising to take their loved ones overseas to die a comfortable death because they don't, feel that it would ever be facilitated in this country. It's heartbreaking. It's devastating. We are exporting the problem. It's, you know, as a country, we're going, don't want to deal with this, send them off to Switzerland. It's wrong, and I feel nothing but heartache for that family. Mm. Um, we did look into taking Dad to Dignitas. Um, we had conversations with them. It's expensive, which is why they're fundraising. Mm. Um, it's not cheap, and it was something that we just couldn't do. And. Um, yeah, my heart bleeds for them. It's wrong on all kinds of levels as far as I'm concerned. Clive, finally, just remind us where we are in terms of uh, Lord Falconer's bill and his attempts to try and get the law changed yeah. on assisted suicide in this country. Well, his bill was a private member's bill, and uh, it did quite well, but it, it ran out of time in the last parliament. Um, but as uh, Lauren says, this wouldn't have assisted uh, Tony Nicholson or Paul Lamb, because sure. it only relates to people who are terminally ill, that's with less than six months to live, who have a settled, independent uh, view and, and wish to die, mm. uh, and who two independent doctors have seen and effectively uh, signed off. But um, uh, at the moment, that, that little prospect of that, even that can into law. Yeah. I think he, he wants to reintroduce it in this parliament. He, we'll he, see if that he, happens. He does, and yeah. um, you know, good, good, good luck to him, but it's, uh, it's always an uphill struggle when it's a private member's bill.